now we're moving on to the non Doctor Who stuff for this mini series. Starting off with the two primary releases to do with Quatermass on TV. What is dubbed the Quatermass Collection, uh, released by the BBC in 2005, containing all of the surviving material from the Quatermass experiment and the complete serials for Quatermass 2 and Quatermass and the Pit on standard DVD. And then here you have the 60th anniversary Blu-ray release of Quatermass and the Pit TV version. Again, I went over these in detail in another recent video, which was my Quatermass overview video, which should have gone out by now. So I won't go over these in tremendous amount of depth and what have you here. If you love your Doctor Who, you need to check out Quatermass. That's all I'm gonna say. And then we have a TV show that I gave a really, really good chance as it's really iconic and really popular, but is one that I have not really been able to get into. And that is the Twilight Zone. I have both the first season and the second season of the Twilight Zone. I have kind of come to the conclusion that Whereas it does have great episodes, particularly Eye of the Beholder from the second season, I've come to the conclusion that The Twilight Zone is a very inconsistent series with a lot of bad episodes that you have to trudge through to get to the good ones really, which has been my kind of experience with season two. I've only watched up to the episode uh, Dust in this particular season and I'm not really sure if I want to continue as of now. I may cherry pick other episodes out of the set and what have you because I'm just finding the Twilight Zone to be very very inconsistent personally. Whereas it does have great episodes I don't think it's that great of a show overall. Yeah I kind of get how it's like a really iconic TV show and I can definitely tell that there have been some iconic episodes of TV from what I've seen of these two seasons. Um, I have seen all of season one, by the way. Um, but for me, I just find the Twilight Zone for now to be really inconsistent. And personally, I don't think I'm going to be checking out any more of the Twilight Zone at this current point in time. Continuing our run of the anthological stuff, we have the complete first series of The Outer Limits, which is a big 8-disc DVD box set containing all 32 episodes of the first series of The Outer Limits. I've only watched the first five episodes, but the only one that I didn't really like, which may be a controversial opinion as I think this is quite a liked episode, was The Architects of Fear personally, but the other four, the galaxy being the hundred days of the dragon, the man of the power, and the sick finger, were all fantastic episodes, in my opinion, particularly the galaxy being. Um, so, yeah, I will check out the rest of this TV show at some point, but that could be a while considering the length of the TV show that I am currently watching. But, yeah, there is that the complete first series of The Outer Limits. And then we have another fairly uh, sizable box set here, and that is the BFI DVD release of all of the surviving episodes from the BBC Anthology TV series, Out of the Unknown, which for me is a TV show that is very, very interesting to talk about, as I'm finding talking about the show and what have you to be very interesting with regards to its kind of like origins as well as all of its kind of parallels to do with Doctor Who and what have you and I'm just finding it to be a really really fascinating show to uh, talk about in general and I will soon uh, continue my Out of the Unknown uh, kind of exploration series at some point soon with parallels to Doctor Who and the continuation of the missing episodes but yeah with regards to the tv show itself i've watched a handful of episodes from it and the only one i thought was absolutely outstanding was uh to lay a ghost which i will be reviewing um at some point maybe early next year 
Um, but yeah, it's it's all right so far with regards to the episodes I've seen from this show. But I would like to give it another chance, and I would like to give this full box set a complete watch through at some point, um, which is again probably going to be a bit later on down the line, as due to the size of the current TV show that I am watching. And speaking of that TV show that I am currently watching, we have Dark Shadows, and this here is a free disc DVD release containing the first 20 Barnabas Collins episodes, uh, along with an introduction kind of recapping the first 208 or 209 roughly. And then we have a factory sealed copy of the 16th DVD collection, as well as a unsealed copy of DVD collection number 21. And then to top absolutely everything off, I have this, which is what is known as the Dark Shadows Coffin Set. Dark Shadows was a gothic horror soap opera that ran from 1966 through to 1971 and amassed a grand total of 1,225 episodes and this coffin styled box set collects all 1,225 of them in this 131 DVD disc box set in 22 different Amaray DVD cases in this big kind of deluxe cardboard box styled like a coffin. This is yet another DVD release that I won't be going over massive detail in this particular video because I am going to be doing a complete overview and kind of review of the box set. Not necessarily talking about the show itself but talking about the box set itself and everything that comes in it um, including all of the special features and the kind of layout of the episodes and just kind of a general overview of the box set um, which will be released as a special Halloween video for on my channel so stay tuned for that. But yeah, Dark Shadows the complete original series coffin box set. I am very very happy to have this in the collection. As you might be able to guess, I spent a lot of money on this box set, as you can imagine. Um, but I am very, very happy to have this DVD box set in my collection, as it has been a TV show that I've been really wanting to check out. And I have started my journey through all 1,225 episodes of this Goliath uh, series and I'm really really enjoying it so far but as I said I'm not going to go over this show in kind of detail here I'm saving that for my complete overview on this glorious box set known as the Dark Shadows Coffin Box Set. Next up we have a TV show that again I just want to go over quickly with as it's another one like the Twilight Zone that I haven't really been able to get into but to a much kind of bigger extent and that is Star Trek. For the releases of it I have Star Trek the original series Origins which is this single Blu-ray disc release containing five of the most iconic episodes from the original run of the show. Out of this I have watched The Cage and I wasn't really able to get into it and I can't really remember much about it either. And then I also have this DVD release of some of the episodes from the original series. And then I also have, going slightly out of chronological order here, the first box set of Star Trek The Next Generation, the first season. Watch the uh, two-parter pilot encounter at Farpoint in this. And whereas I did think it was great, I didn't really go back to uh, the rest of this season for some reason. Um, so yeah, that is that. I don't really have a lot to say on Star Trek. I just haven't really been able to get into it. It's just one of those shows where I haven't really been able to get into it. I know it has like a massive 
uh, fan base and what have you, but for me personally, it's just one of those TV shows I haven't really been able to get into for some reason, and I don't think I am going to be uh, giving Star Trek like a try again anytime soon or anything like that, because simply because there's so many other things that have a much higher priority on my list and what have you of what I want to kind of check out and what have you. And here is one of those kind of uh, shows. This is the complete uh, series of UFO by Jerry Anderson, which got a continuation series in the show Space 1999, I think it's called. Um, but this is just the first series of 26 episodes known as uh, UFO picked these up in a charity shop a while ago brand new in shrink wrapping and it is something that I definitely want to uh, check out at some point and then here we have some pretty fantastic television with regards to the paranormal we have BFI ghost stories classic adaptations from the BBC the stalls of Barchester and a warning to the curious this is a part of, not a series, but a strand of made-for-TV short films adapting uh, ghost stories, mainly by M.R. James, but that got changed a little bit uh, near the end of the original 70s run of these adaptations. Uh, the Stalls of Barchester, I found it, I found it to be an enjoyable watch, but I found it to be quite hard to follow in some areas. But I still enjoyed it quite a bit, and I would give it like a 7, maybe an 8 out of 10, but I would need to re-watch it. And then A Warning to the Curious from 1972 was absolutely incredible in my opinion, and is a low-end entry to my uh, favourite pieces of TV of all time. I list which I would like to do eventually um, I just thought it was absolutely fantastic and was just a really good kind of cautionary story about curses and one's pursuit of things I would have said I thought it was just absolutely fantastic and it is as I said one of my favorite pieces of TV of all time personally um, not massively high up it would be kind of a low end entry but I still thought it was absolutely incredible and I would give it like a 9.5 out of 10 and even though I don't give it a 10 I would still make it onto my uh, like top pieces of uh, TV of all time list which is something I would like to do eventually as I thought it was absolutely fantastic and then we have another BFI DVD release of the ghost story adaptations from the BBC this one containing The Signalman, which is the Charles Dickens adaptation, and then the two original scripts, Stigma and The Ice House. Stigma, I thought, was a great short film, and The Ice House, I thought, was alright personally, but The Signalman, on the other hand, in my opinion, is one of the absolute greatest pieces of television I have ever seen. I watched this for the first time late one night and it absolutely blew me away. Everything about it is incredible and I would describe it as being a perfect, perfect piece of television and a slash a perfect kind of short film and it is without question one of my absolute favorite pieces of television of all time it's easily in my top five quite possibly in my top three i absolutely loved and adored this adaptation of charles dickens the signalman and in something a little similar we have another kind of made for tv film but it's not a short film this time it's in fact a full length feature we have the Stone Tape by Nigel Neal, uh, who created uh, Quatermass, and this is his other big uh, claim to fame, the Stone Tape, which I also watched recently, and I thought it was fantastic uh, once again. 
although I feel like I need to give it another watch to fully go over like a few details and what have you that there was to this thing um, but even still I thought this was an absolutely uh, fantastic kind of 90 minute feature that really kind of played around very well with one of the key talked about discussion topics within the paranormal field and that is the stone tape theory. If you love paranormal horror stuff I would highly recommend this, you cannot really go wrong. I thought it was absolutely fantastic and there is some very creepy and well done moments to it. And then taking a bit of a small interlude from the paranormal horror stuff, Survivors created by Terry Nation. I have the first box set of the f first season here as well as the second season. Um, I need to pick up the third season of the original run which this is a part of at some point and give the whole series a watch. It's a show that I have been meaning to check out for quite a while now. I have these two uh, DVD box sets of the first two series is in the show and I've been meaning to watch them but I just simply haven't gotten around to doing so just yet. And then we have a TV show DVD box set that I watched the entirety of recently and I absolutely loved and adored it. And that TV show in question is The Omega Factor. I recently acquired this complete series three disc DVD box set off of eBay and I watched the entire show in about the space of a week averaging about two episodes a day and I absolutely loved and adored it and I will actually say that this is my second favourite TV show of all time now out beating the X-Files which was my second favourite TV show of all time. The best way that I can describe the Omega Factor is that it's a 10 part single series prototype of the X-Files with all of the governmental conspiracies and organisations and stuff like that but with it entirely having an emphasis on the field of paranormal, parapsychology, ghosts and hauntings and stuff like that as opposed to the kind of science fiction and alien stuff that the X-Files would dabble in. Um, but yeah, the Omega Factor, I, I think this is just an incredible TV show and in my opinion is a truly, truly fantastic piece of cult television and it's thoroughly consistent. There was not a single bad episode in this entire 10 episode section. The weakest one in my opinion was uh, St. Anthony's Fire which I would give a 7 out of 10 but the other nine episodes all get at least an eight out of 10. I would also say that none of the episodes were as good as the first one, but that's not to say that it was a bad TV show overall, as it was thoroughly, thoroughly consistent and an absolutely incredible ride to go on. And I would also say that arguably this TV show itself is greater than the sum of its parts, I would have said personally. But yeah, I absolutely love the Omega Factor. The characters in it were fantastic. There were some fantastic set pieces to it, some extremely scary moments, such as one particular one involving a phone box near the kind of, near the end of the undiscovered country, or maybe it was in the middle of it. Yeah, it was in the middle of it, that episode. Um, and it was just incredible overall. I'm a massive fan of uh, the paranormal and I have been a fan of the paranormal for life really. It's always been a field that I have been fascinated by with regards to things in this world and this TV show ticks every one of those boxes for me. It ticks every single box for my liking of the paranormal and 
it was just absolutely incredible and it was a ride that I just loved every minute of. I just thought it was an absolutely incredible TV show personally and as I said if you're into the paranormal and what have you I simply cannot recommend the Omega Factor enough. And the ending of this show is quite interesting as well because I believe the final episode in this show, Illusions, was kind of in a way setting up towards a second season, but that unfortunately never happened because this was a very, very controversial series for its time in 1979, mainly thanks to uh, Mary Whitehouse doing her stuff, and um, it ended up only being a single 10 episode series of television so we never got to see a second season of the Omega Factor. The way this uh, series ends with the 10th episode Illusions is still fantastic in my opinion and is a very worthwhile ending to this absolutely brilliant uh, TV show. Yeah, the Omega Factor, I've rambled on long enough about it. It's absolutely fantastic. I love it. My second favourite TV show of all time. Ticks every one of the boxes for my liking of paranormal horror. And it's just incredible. Absolutely incredible. And if you're at all a fan of gothic horror and the paranormal, I would strongly, strongly recommend The Omega Factor because it is beyond brilliant. And not to mention that the theme tune is one of my favourite theme tunes to television it's just absolutely fantastic and i could go on for ages about it which i probably will do in a review series at some point in the future because it's brilliant